everybody. This is Frank from AF Bennett Salon and Wellness Spa. When we go through this, I mean, we take so many things for granted with COVID and everything that's going on. I hate to see the word. But my God, you have the keys to the kingdom, Frank. I mean, people want to escape. And we thought that the movies was exciting. And Walt Disney, you know, that's what we thought was an escape. And now if you said to any one of your clients, come in, we're open, that would be an escape. You know, uh, we, 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 we just made a decision that we were going to take, speculate and take a stab and say, hey, listen, I, we, we're going to open up. Uh, we're believing that the governor is going to execute this wisdom, and we're believing based upon the plan. We're believing that we're going to be open up, God willing, middle of June. And we had an opportunity to share that with all of our guests. And, you know, so many times what we're doing, we so much passion and we're caught in the moment that we sometimes value what we're bringing to people. When I say undervalue what we're bringing to people, I mean, we know we're doing a great thing. We know we do beautiful things. We make people feel good on the inside and on the out. But you have no idea how much human touch, human interaction really, really is the spark of human existence. And I had an opportunity to do something that you really don't do. I had an opportunity to call and speak to many of our guests. We sent them that email. We said, we're open. You know what happened? I had conversations with people, such deep, meaningful conversations with people that have been our guests for so many years. I have to tell you, there was a point in time, several times throughout the course of this day, I recognized that I was almost moved to tears because I recognized how important we are to people. Yeah, you absolutely are. Frank, I did get that same email, and that's when I reached out to you early this morning, probably like five o'clock this morning. And I said, Frank, you know, it's time, it's time to do the podcast. And, you know, I know you've been doing a lot to get ready for your customers. We want to give you the opportunity to tell everybody what you're doing, you know, so that do they, they do feel safe, your staff feels safe. My first question to you, which I think is going to be the question from a lot of people is, what is getting your hair done or, or any of the services that you do, what is it going to look like walking in your doors? Well, you know, I, you know I, I'm a big proponent to making sure that we work with the realities that are but I'm also a very big proponent in being able to create my own reality. And it's one of the reasons why 20 years, 20 plus years later, we're still rolling, we're still um, the go-to name because we're able to see things sometimes a little bit ahead of the curve. And I believe in establishing our own reality. I know that people are concerned about things like, you know, I don't want to get ill. Or I was ill and I, you know, I'm afraid that um, maybe somehow the way I'm still ill and I can transfer that to somebody else. My job is to give people, our guests, our friends, our family, you know, so many of the people we speak to, we don't have them guests anymore, even clients. We call them a family of guests because really at the end of the day, I look at them and I go, oh my goodness gracious, these people are like our family. My job, I have one number one job. My number one job is to make sure everybody is in a safe, good environment the people come to see us could be in a position where they feel comfortable. In other words, they're coming in for that little slice of heaven. We don't want to hamper that slice of heaven. Subconscious thoughts of, am I going to be safe? Am I going to be able to go there and enjoy my complete experience? So we've made some very unilateral decisions to get really, really way ahead of the curve. Of course, we're going to do the obvious things. You know, the wearing of the masks and then the sanitizers and, and making sure that, you know, so much of the environment is clean. But, you know, we also believe that we have to do other things. We believe that, you know, sanitation from a sanitizing standpoint has to come from not only surfaces, but it has to be airborne. You know, we're taking great lengths and measures to work with UV lights to make sure that overnight that the place is in a UV environment. So when we do come back in, any bacteria that might be airborne or in any space in the environment is gone. We also are taking great measures to make sure that we're using HEPA filters. We're using things that um, are antimicrobial. We're going to have air filter machines in stations. They're not going to be every six feet, but you know something? What we're going to do? We're going to put about four or five of them around a thousand, a thousand square feet. AF Bennett is right now. We're about seven thousand square feet. We're in the middle of an expansion. We're going to grow to about nine thousand square feet. It's a lot, a lot of equipment. But you know something? 
if it makes a person feel good, understand that they're being protected, these are just some of the things we're doing. Yeah, it seems like you've put a lot of thought into it. And that's great, Frank. That's great. I could I could totally see UV lighting. Uh, the HEPA filter is big, very, very big. That sounds like a great plan so far. That's great. Uh, so tell me, what, what are you doing? Why, how are you open? Uh, are you pre-booking? Are you selling product? Tell me, tell me what you're doing. Well, you know, we made a decision a couple of weeks ago that we need to create our own, our own reality and our own normal. I've never been one that is very sheepish. God has believed me as a leader. And, and I believe that, you know, he made me very uniquely. And, um, and during all these times, he gives me insights. I know I have angels that go before me. I uh, laugh, giggle about that one. But, you know, for some reason, I, I'm like a cat. I land on my feet every single time. And I've been given so much insight to make sure that I have to lead through this. And so many people look to, you know, the things I do, whether they're other people, industry leaders, or people in our own industry, or people outside of our industry. And I, and I say that from a place of, of humility. I don't say that from a place of, oh, my God, you know, hey, listen, you know, we're the, the ones to watch. Watch us. We do it better. No, 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 no. Because you know something? That's not the way it gets done. You got to lead humbly. You got to lead people with the truth, humility, and, you know, I, I really believe that we are making good decisions early on about we did hair color kits for women. We knew women were going to be homebound. We understood they would be making some bad decisions, either about going out and getting their hair color from a box dye and, and ruining their investment you know, on top of their hair. Listen, many women spent a lot of money to get their hair looking just that right. And we also knew that there would be people that um, would resort out of desperation to having a hairdresser that would potentially do something unscrupulous like potentially expose another person by going to do a, a house call during this time and break the law. And we would, we would play by the rules, but also not only just play by the rules, but also be innovative, be inventive, think outside the box. What will it take to be able to still create momentum? Because we know, I mean, a great leader, I mean, I mean, one of the best leaders in the country right now, John Maxwell. John Maxwell simply says, you know, momentum is, it's called the, th the theory of, mom of momentum. We know that momentum begets momentum. If you take a business that is in momentum and doing great and in a really good ups uptick, like our business was in a tremendous uptick, if you take that and you take that business and you slow it down to a grinding halt and you take all the momentum out of that business, it's very difficult to get that business to start to create momentum and start moving again. So I knew early on it was going to be important that Yes, we were going to come down. Things were going to slow down. But not to a fall. We're going to have to keep it moving. We had to keep momentum. And some of those things are by doing those things. We sold gift certificates this month this day. That's great. That's great. Tell me about these hair kits that you did. Or this, uh, I guess, what did you do? Did you do like FaceTime consultations or something for women that needed hair dye? Yeah, we did, we did mostly FaceTime. They didn't have the patience to have four or five women beating me up on a Zoom. So I did one at a time on FaceTime. Okay. <laughs> and we were able to get with some really, really great people. Our guests are, our, you know, I, I really, I hate delineating male and female, but I'm just going to say our AFNA core family of guests, uh, they've just been brilliant. You know, they've been supporting us. So, you know, it's something that we, we did. And, 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 and we didn't work from a place of fear. One of the biggest plagues and during this incredible outbreak is the anxiety and the succumbing to fear. And we've seen many people in the, in the place of fear. As a hairdresser, you know, you fear, oh my God, I'm going to give them this formula. They're going to do their hair. It's going to be amazing. They're never going to come back. You know something? We didn't take that bet. The bet we took, do something good for somebody, charge them a really, really fair price. Don't look to make money. Make enough to cover your costs. Make sure they can look and feel great. And you want to know something? When the time comes that you have to come out of hiding, they're going to remember you. Because people remember who does the right thing. I remember 9-11. And I remember six months later, a year later, people remembering who did the right thing. That's right. That's right. So, Frank, when, when they do come out of hiding, okay, I'm anticipating, and I'm sure you are, craziness. So, are you scheduling people now yes we are scheduling people right now we're actually we've opened up the appointment book we're believing that we're going to be able to be in that space and 
we're going to have that recovery we're looking for. And listen, let's not fool ourselves. We're talking about a long climb out of a deep hole. Sure. You know, I know we all want to believe we're going to come out of this untouched, unscathed, that things are going to go just, you know, switch the, switch the light switch, it's going to go right back to where we are. But the truth of the matter is we're in a depression. People don't even know it. And we have to make sure that we're, we're looking out and looking ahead. And what we could do to make sure that individuals are being cared for and everything along, everything that goes into being able to provide that. Because, you know, AFN, everyone says, oh, my God, AFN, it, that's, that's this, this really fancy place. And, um, you know, say, oh, my God, you know, it's so fancy. You know, it's, you know, it's where the rich people go. And, you know, the truth of the matter is we do have people of wealth and they do come here. You know what the truth of the matter is? I'm a kid who grew up in Brooklyn on welfare. And you know something? I never forgot where I came from. And we have many people who are blue collar. We have a lot of people who just, just they come once or twice a year. And this is a big treat for them. And you know something? It makes my heart completely, completely sing with joy when I know that I can make a woman who is of means and a woman potential or a man who is not of means and everyone in between. The humanity that binds us together. Who we've been made to be. We've been made in the likeness of God. I can go wrong. That's right. That's right. It's a good way to look at it, Frank. It's a good way to look at it. Frank, uh, I got to ask you a question. Being that we're in this environment, I would assume that some people are going to call for an appointment and get cold feet. Are you waiving cancellation fees? Yeah, you know something? We generally don't have cancellation fees. So okay. we're one of the high end spas. When you make an appointment, you don't have to give a credit card to even make the appointment. We believe people at their word. We believe that they want to come. And we believe that if you're canceling your appointment, there's got to be a good reason for it. Now, there are times where someone books out several hours of our time for a huge full day at the spa or something like that, where we do have a cancellation policy in place. But you know, the truth of the matter is we have a liberal amount of time. You know, we're going to take our 48-hour policy and, and break that down to 24 hours or see if you've booked out five or six hours of our time and be able to say, hey, listen, you know something? If you're not feeling right, you don't think that you can go there and be of um, good cheer and you cannot go there and feel healthy enough or I'll go on better. You don't feel that you will be healthy enough to be in the presence of others with social distancing and everything else. We want you to feel comfortable. I mean, we, I never, I never subscribe to the fact of forcing people to do anything. What people do things because they want to do it. Right, it's a good philosophy. Good philosophy. Talking about time, Frank. I'm sure you're anticipating this rush. Are you planning on extending your hours? You know, uh, yes, we're going to be extending our hours on a couple of days during the week. Not tremendously. If, if I could be honest, there is going to be a huge rush. In fact, we see the rush already. You know, but we're already open 14 hours a day. A little bit of advice, though. If Disney was open 24 hours a day, it wouldn't be enough. And from the energy I'm getting from you and the way this place looks, you might want to consider 24 hours, <laughs> especially I'm sure Joe's going to mention staggered shifts. So I've gotten great massages there. Can you tell me what that's going to look like? Yeah, you know, uh, what's really interesting is you said something earlier today about, uh, or in the interview, about um, trying to get a, trying to think ahead and trying to be innovative, thinking out of the box. You know, you hear, you hear all these uh, cliches being used in times like this, and like, you know, draconian measures, and you hear things about top of mind, and you know, all these key phrases and key words everyone loves to use uh, in different periods in time. But, you know, the truth of the matter is if I could just take one of them and just say top of mind. I think what's top of mind is people want to make sure that they want to be healthy. And not to, not to marginalize what I just said, but the truth of the matter is a best, the best defense is an incredible offense. I have information that I've been sharing with my guests about boosting your immune system, things that you could simply do. You just simply, the simple eradication of sugar in your diet uh, creates an environment for not only your natural body's defenses and white blood cells and T, you know, T cells and all the things that fight, not to create uh, the, uh, the armies that fight against all of the horrible horrors of viruses. But what's interesting is they've shown that when inside of a body that is low sugar consumed, that these viruses actually have a very difficult time thriving and actually living. So 
there's a lot of things. Like I'll give you an example. I'll give you one package that we're doing. We developed this really cool package this year. We have something called the Healthcare Hero. That is a package that's made for healthcare providers who are going to come in and who are going to have, some people have sores, wear that mask all day long in a humid environment. They have permanent etchings into the th in their faces. They have dryness in areas that they never saw before, chapped lips like that, as if they were standing outside in like sub zero degree weather. So we have things like that, that we're building things to be able to address the things on the healthcare side. But we also have something called the immune booster package, which is really cool. The immune booster package is something that, you know, uh, I feel felt like it was just dropped right on me. Like, you know, you got to do this. And I came up with this really cool thing. I said, you know, we know that there are certain things that work. We know that vitamin C works. We know zinc works. We know ultraviolet light works, right? We know that uh, the detoxification of the body is a very key component, right? So we know that at least when you're with us and you come in for the new booster package, we'll be able to say, listen, here's a vitamin C facial. Really cool, great, it's wonderful, it's a decollete, it's great, we know it goes into the skin, and we know that's really nourishing, and we know that everyone's been wearing the mask, so that's going to bring moisture. Wonderful, good healing properties. But now we move on to a massage. We move on to a great massage, because in this massage, we have, people use oil. Well, we thought of something. We said, what if we took oil, a carry oil, and we infused it with zinc, vitamin D, and vitamin C in a medical grade at a capacity that would not burn the skin, but be able to be absorbed into the dermis. You know the largest organ on the body is dermis, which is your skin. We give you a massage with that stuff. We're getting that stuff into your body, right? And then what if once we had that on your body, we were able to go over your body with this really cool wand, this ultraviolet wand, low dose, Safe for the body, safe for the user, and be able to create that, that environment where if there's anything that's there, it's being killed and all the good stuff is going in. And to top it all off with something really called the de our detox pedicure, where someone gets a pedicure, puts their foot inside these ancient minerals. By the way, I'm not, I'm not going to say it, but it is a secret formula. You put your feet in there, it starts out clear. As it starts working on your feet and working on the calves, and you're in there, all of a sudden, the water starts, depending on how toxic you are, go from brown to black and pulls the toxins out of your body. So we know a healthy defense is a healthy and strong offense. Rather than putting Band-Aids, we believe, get healthy, be strong, and then you don't have to worry about Band-Aids. That's right. That's right. Be, be, be preventative. I agree. Uh, I, I'm going to be talking to you tomorrow about uh, booking that package because it sounded uh, fantastic, and I'm looking forward to it. That's really great. That's, awesome. that's really great. That's good, man. That's that's great that you put that energy into it and figured this out for everybody. Um, I think it's going to be well. All right, Frank. After Corona is done and everything is open, what's the first thing you're going to do? I'm going to go visit my mother. Uh, we we uh, we hear that a lot here. We hear that a lot here. It's uh, it's the, everybody's missing their family. That's for sure. Yeah. Is she local, Frank? Or yeah, actually, um, she's in she's in um in Bensonhurst, where I grew up in the in 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 the in the building I, I actually I grew up in, and um, you know I'm looking forward to going and spending some time with her, taking her out to dinner. Um, being able to hold her and hug her. I think the second thing I'll do after that is uh, spend time with my church family and be, get together with the people that I've been praying with so diligently. I've been praying, we've been praying every night uh, and praying for Staten Island, praying for our president, praying for the local administration, praying for the people who were COVID struck, uh, praying for our economy. I mean, my goodness gracious, you know, I, I just feel so passionately that people have come to an awareness to know that, you know, hey, listen, you know, <laughs> this was a great reset. This is a good opportunity for people to slow down a little bit and kind of get, and get back to basics. Frank, Yeah. so we've all been stuck in the house. I think it's 58 days, I'm not counting, no. What, have you picked up any hobbies or you, have you gone down a rabbit hole that you like you realized or you see something now that you, you didn't before this? 
Yeah, um, I, I've been very angry. As positive as I seem and as, as, as focused as I am, I've battled a lot of anger over the last uh, two months. I've seen some things that I think are really good and really just, and I've seen some things that I think are detrimental, have raged against the virus. I was very angry at the virus. I know it sounds crazy, but very angry at it. I saw people that I knew and cared for get ill, some die. I've been on an emotional roller coaster. I, I know uh, I'm supposed to sound like a motivational speaker, and I'm supposed to you know, be all about happy, joy, joy, and all that happy horse stuff. But the truth that matters, if I can keep it real, it's an emotional roller coaster. And, and I've got to learn a little bit about myself on my threshold. You're not alone on the roller coaster, bro. That's why we're here. <laughs> yeah, definitely not alone. And part of this podcast, uh, Frank, is uh, I do one of my businesses is a cleaning company. And, you know, at first, you know, we were just inundated with work, right? We're cleaning millions of square feet a week. It was great. But then, you know, then we started seeing the deaths. Then we started seeing businesses not open. And then it really started to hit me too, you know? And it was like, you know what? It's not worth it. The business is great, but you know, I'd, I'd rather rewind if I can. So that's kind of why we're doing this. We haven't shut down. We've been busy. We've hired over 200 people in the past seven weeks. And we're kind of seeing businesses that are open. And you know, we're seeing employees that are scared to go to work. We're seeing employers that are panicking. And that's why we're reaching out to people like you because we kind of, we're there before you get there. We're there before your business opens and we're seeing what's going on. And you know, what I felt uh, would be most beneficial to people like yourself is, you know, you're doing good for your clients. You know, you should be uh, praised for it. And, and if we can help get the word out, we're gonna do that. Uh, and that's really what we're doing. We're just trying to make everybody comfortable uh, to a point where everybody goes back to normal. I didn't know what to expect uh, in this in this podcast. I wasn't necessarily sure, but um, I, I I understand it now. Uh, and I you know I think it's really admirable. I mean because you know people really really need uh, to hear these types of things because you know I think what happens is the uh, the tricks of the mind uh, uh, and alienation. You know, we a lot of times we feel that we're alone in things, and, and we're the only person feeling these thought, feeling these things, and, and experiencing these things. And once we recognize that other people are, we're able to uh, draw solace, but we also draw strength because you know when people are vulnerable and, and, and share their hearts, I think that I think I think I think people are able to to draw from that well. So if you shine your light and you get personable and you put yourself out there. It absolutely allows me to shine my light because I said, you know what, Frank, he's vulnerable. So now it, it just allows people to open up themselves. Sure, sure. And we've seen it all. I mean, it's, it's amazing the emotions I've gone through as well. Uh, you know, I've seen people that have been going to AA start drinking. I've seen people uh, or I've talked to people who wanted to commit suicide. And this is all in seven weeks. I mean, it's just crazy. I, I've seen... People just completely flip out that they're home and can't leave. It's, it's been wild. It's really been a wild uh, two months. You know? We're but all chasing comfort, Frank. <laughs> we are chasing comfort. Yes, yes. Uh, people, yeah. people, yeah. people are chasing comfort, and uh, people are looking for things, um, you know, to uh, make them feel better. I mean, and I can see what you said about people, you know, and, relapsing into drug addiction or alcohol addiction. At the end of the day, they're chasing comfort. And um, I, I'm very happy to say that, you know, we are, we are offering a more wholesome comfort. And, uh, you know, people come to AFN, you know, I mean, you think about, you know, hey, listen, you know, you, you, here you are, you're, you're, you're AFN, you're around 20, my goodness gracious, gentlemen, we're around more than 20 years now. And, what is it really all about? It's about making money? Is it was it about is it about just having a, a, a better prosperous life? And I really think that you know we've been graced. I mean, I, I think I think I literally, I, I, guys, I have to say, and I hope you put this out there. I really feel like God's put the hand, his hand on us and said, you know something, you're going to be okay for a time such as this because you need to be able to bring that kind of love and tenderness, nurturing. And a happy place, 
whatever it might be. You know, I really believe that God's sustained us so that we could do that. That's right. That's right. And you're doing that. And uh, that's great, man. That's great. So, Frank, uh, can you tell us where you are and uh, how everybody can get in contact with you? We're at 350 New York Lane. Uh, people want to get in touch with us. It's real simple. You can just call 718-979-9000. We still believe in telephones. So we answer them. That's Instagram, AF Bennett, uh, Facebook, Twitter. I mean, every social media outlet we're on. So you can get to us anyway. You probably, you could throw a dart with your eyes closed and it's going to land on something you can touch us with. <laughs> That's great, Frank. Thank you. I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to hug you one day. Your energy is outstanding, brother. And, you know... If you're watching this podcast, you listen to a little bit of this and you didn't catch all what Frank was saying, go to his Instagram, AF Bennett, and he's going to give some knowledge. I can't, I'm going to start following you, bro. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Right. Thanks, Frank.